Hello, good afternoon to one and all. I'm Dr. Shobhna, pediatrician from Women's Center by Madhokan Hospital, Coimbatore. Here today I'm in front of you to let you know about uh, various facts about breastfeeding. So breastfeeding, as we all know, it's going to be a very healthy start for your babies because it's the best, first, natural, healthier food for your baby. We all know that uh, breastfeeding is a natural process. Uh, yeah, it's right. But still women, they do need extra support, motivation and encouragement while breastfeeding. Uh, breastfeeding has got a lot of health benefits, not only for your babies, for you too. And uh, these health benefits are just not going to be uh, for the babies only till they are being breastfed. It is going to continue uh, till childhood or even in adults. So the more we come to know about uh, human breast milk, the more we discover about its value in human nutrition and development as well. So there are uh, lots of health benefits for both babies and mother. Hence, we recommend uh, exclusive breastfeeding in babies. So exclusive breastfeeding means babies needs to be given only breast milk, no water, sugar water, honey, cow's milk, formula, nothing else apart from any other medications or supplements being prescribed by a pediatrician. So this exclusive breastfeeding is recommended till completion of six months because uh, babies they get all the nutrients that is essential for growth and development uh, in from the breast milk alone till completion of six months. So coming to the uh, advantages for babies, it provides a joyful bonding uh, between the mother and baby and it's a perfect nutrition. So breast milk almost has got all the essential nutrients that your growing baby needs for the growth and development, especially in the first six months of life. And it's easier to digest. And uh, various studies have proven that like uh, babies who have been exclusively breastfed and continue to be breastfed till two years have less chances of having uh, respiratory infections, gastrointestinal infections and so on. So babies who have been exclusively breastfed and have been continued to be breastfed till two years have less number of uh, respiratory infections and diarrheal illness. And uh, as we all know, like it's cost effective too and it's available everywhere uh, and it's like very sterile and you need not have any, uh, uh, you need not spend any time to prepare it. And it's just uh, available in the optimal temperature and with all the optimal nutrients that your growing baby needs. And uh, also proven that babies who have been uh, breastfed for longer have higher IQ levels than the babies who have not been breastfed. And uh, certain studies have also proven that these babies who have been breastfed have less chances of acquiring uh, heart disease, becoming obese later in childhood or in, even in adulthood. And uh, these babies, when they grow up, they have less chances of having hypertension, diabetes, certain types of cancers and heart disease even. Hence, uh, we just recommend that all the healthy infants should be breastfed exclusively for the first six months of life. And exclusive breastfeeding means, which I have already mentioned, no water, no juice, no non-human milk and no other foods except for certain uh, uh, multivitamin supplements or any other medications. So breast milk and human cholesterol are made for exclusively for your babies and it's going to be the best first food for your baby. And as I have already mentioned that easily digested and it's like well absorbed. All the nutrients that is being present in the breast milk are completely absorbed. So that the health benefits for your baby will be much more better than any other milk. And uh, it also prevents under five child deaths, 
it protects the children against certain infections which also have already mentioned like respiratory infections diarrheal illness etc and uh, certain studies have also proven that uh, these babies have less chances of having uh, allergies later in childhood they have better intelligence it also promotes emotional bonding with the mother and these children also have less chances of acquiring heart disease diabetes and certain types of cancers like lymphoma and the benefits are not only for your babies there are lots of benefits for you mothers too and uh, as you just continue to breastfeed uh, you just exhaust yourself and which helps you to lose weight and uh, regain your pre pregnancy weight and a hormone that is being produced while you just continue to breastfeed also prevents uh, bleeding after delivery so it prevents the postpartum bleeding which makes the uterus contract therefore helping you to uh, minimize the bleeding after delivery and breastfeeding also protects against certain types of cancers especially breast and ovarian cancer and uh, it also produces uh, amenorrhea like which we call it as lactational amenorrhea which by itself uh, acts as a natural contraceptive so benefits to the family and society are ultimately it just contributes to child survival it's economical it promotes family planning and it's environmental friendly also so you need not uh, spend lots of money in buying tins and tins of formula sterilizers feeding bottles and so on hence it also saves money so initially to start with for successful breastfeeding there should be a willing and motivated mother and the newborn should be active enough and uh, uh, should be otherwise doing good and there should be a motivator who can bring both the mother and newborn together which usually is a health professional or a relative so these are the few differences between breast milk and cow's milk and formula and uh, breast milk almost has got all the nutrients that your baby needs in a perfect proportion and moreover it's easily digestible and the protein which is present in breast milk it's just uh, easily Uh, digestible by the baby whereas uh, the protein that is being present in the cow's milk is just quite complex so that like baby's tummy may not be ready enough to digest such complex protein thereby uh, babies will land up in having indigestion problems and moreover the nutrients that is present in cow's milk it's not completely absorbed and uh, breast milk also has got certain anti infective factors which is which is going to help your babies to boost up their immunity and to prevent certain types of infections which is not present either in the cow's milk or in formula and at the same time breast milk also has got a lot of growth factors which is like very much helpful for your uh, baby's brain development and uh, development of certain organs which again is neither present in cow's milk nor in formula milk so next question would be uh, when to initiate breastfeeding so there is no fixed time schedule to initiate breastfeeding as early as possible would be absolutely fine so whether it is going to be a normal delivery or c section so whenever the baby is ready enough to have a feed just we have to initiate breastfeeding so uh, practically it could be even like within half an hour uh, following a normal delivery of a half an hour to 45 minutes following c section and in our hospital setting like what we normally practice is like as soon as the baby is uh, born whether it be a normal delivery or c section we practice delayed cot clamping which we call it as dcc and this delayed cot clamping is nothing but like initial practice was like as soon as the baby is born we used to uh, clamp the cot and cut it immediately and obviously the practice has changed and uh, various studies have proven that there are lack of advantages for the babies if we do delayed cot clamping dcc that is that extra amount of blood that is being present in the cot will be uh, reinfused back into your baby's circulation so that your baby's iron levels and uh, uh, hemoglobin levels will improve so that your babies may not have anemia especially in the uh, early infancy so we normally practice delayed cot clamping if otherwise babies are doing well 
um, has cried immediately and uh, color and everything looks okay. We just normally practice delay cord lapping. So as soon as like BCC is being done, um, baby will be handed over to the pediatrician and we uh, pediatricians will uh, assess the baby. So check the vitals. And if the baby is otherwise doing good, we'll just encourage the mothers to initiate breastfeeding as early as possible. So there is no fixed time schedule to initiate breastfeeding. It needs to be started within half an hour of birth or as soon as possible. Okay. And rooming in and bedding is like where the mother and baby are just allowed to uh, stay within the same room. So as to prevent separation and so that it also again promotes breastfeeding. So coming to the technique, uh, first we have to make sure that the latch is proper. So uh, latch means like the babies are not supposed to suck at the nipple alone. So the babies has uh, to latch on, that is attached to get attached to the mother's breast, holding on to the whole of the nipple and most of the part of the areola, which we call it as proper latch. So in the first picture, uh, if uh, the mother's nipple is just being taken uh, nearer to the baby's mouth, baby will wide open the mouth. That's where you have to make the baby uh, latch. Uh, so you're not supposed to forcefully push your nipple into baby's mouth. Uh, when will you make sure that the baby uh, has been latched properly? Okay. So this is like key points of good attachment. So when the baby's mouth is wide open and baby's chin is touching the breast, when the baby's lower lip is curled outward and when the lower portion of the areola is not visible, then the latch is proper. Where you can see in the picture, the baby's mouth is wide open, lower lip is curled outward, chin is touching the breast and the lower portion of the areola is not almost visible. Okay. So the baby has attached to the mother's breast properly. And what are the positions by which you can hold the baby? Okay. Uh, so any position is absolutely fine as long as you and your baby are comfortable with. This is a crab and hold position where you are just holding the baby. Uh, just making your baby's uh, head rest on your elbow. This is the other way around where uh, you just hold the baby's head with your uh, hand, the uh, other hand supporting the breast. So this is cross crab and hold position. Any position is absolutely fine as long as you both are comfortable with. So this is football hold position. So the other common question, how frequently do you need to keep the baby feeding? Okay. So again, you can't uh, fix up any feeding uh, schedule or feeding pattern for babies, especially in the initial few days or few weeks. Generally, babies, they tend to demand more frequently in the initial few days. So let it be even like every half an hour, one hour, two hours, doesn't matter. You have to keep your baby feeding as and when he or she keeps demanding. So it's going to be uh, breastfeeding on demand. Okay. Uh, but generally, babies, they tend to be uh, quite sleepy and uh, they'll be sleeping almost 18 to 20 hours in a day. Sleep will be more during the day. Night, it will be the other way around. They may not sleep. They won't let you all sleep. Okay. So let it be even during the day or night, you have to keep your baby feeding as and when he or she demands. Even if your baby doesn't demand for a feed, the maximum gap between two feeds is supposed to be three hours. And this three hours is from the start point of your previous feed, not from the end point. Okay. So you have to keep feeding um, every two hours or two and a half hours as and when your baby demands. Never feed in the light position. Always sit up and feed. And just keep feeding from both the sides. Initially to start with, uh, at least for 15 to 20 minutes from one side. This is because again, babies will be too sleepy. And when you just keep the baby feeding, they just doze off. And all mothers will have secretion only in drops in the initial few days. Only when you just make your baby suck at your breast as frequently as possible, as longer as possible, your output will start improving. 
because baby sucking is a main stimulus for your milk output uh, so just keep feeding uh, your baby from both the sides and each side for at least 15 to 20 minutes so this is again uh, babies they'll be too sleepy even while feeding so you have to stimulate the baby and make them have at least for 15 to 20 minutes uh, so that they would have had at least for 10 minutes if you have totally uh, fed your baby only for hardly 5 to 10 minutes baby would have made only few sucks which is not going to be enough at this point of time and uh, So whether let it be during the day or night, uh, just don't leave your baby unfit beyond three hours. So the maximum gap between two feeds is supposed to be three hours. And uh, the next uh, query would be uh, your diet during uh, lactation. So there is no uh, specific diet restriction for mothers who are breastfeeding. Uh, unless you are allergic to some stuff or you by yourself don't like to have it, please avoid that. Apart from that, just because you're feeding your baby, you don't have any diet restrictions. But don't have anything in excess, have everything in limits. And the uh, second thing would be, I uh, just need to keep yourself well hydrated, have lots of fluids. Let it be like uh, water, fruit juices, soups, porridges, buttermilk, tender coconut water. So keep yourself well hydrated. At least try to have a couple of glass of some drink before you start feeding your baby. So third thing would be, uh, you can't have at a stretch eight hours sleep as you're having it before because generally babies are tend to be quite sleepy during the day, night, they'll be uh, too much awake and they'll be uh, demanding for feeds also too frequently. So like you need to try to catch up your sleep whenever you find them during the day, whenever your baby remains settled after we fed. So try to catch up your sleep during the daytime and try to have small naps in between. So the other thing would be uh, just keep yourself uh, calm and cool. Don't get uh, too much stressed. And uh, so for all everything, uh, there is no a single factor which keeps your lactation on the go. It's a combination of everything. You have to uh, have a balanced, healthy, nutritious diet. You just include lots of uh, veggies in your diet and uh, fruits, whole fruits. And uh, just have diet rich in protein. Uh, like consume lots of like dals, veggies and uh, whole fruits, nuts and so on. So you need to have a balanced, healthy, uh, nutritious diet. And you just need to keep yourself well hydrated by having lots of fluids and uh, to just try to have uh, adequate sleep, have enough rest in between and just uh, no worries literally, okay. So the next would be what are the problems you might encounter in breastfeeding, okay. So the first thing is like if you have flat nipples or inverted nipples, you might uh, find it a little bit of difficulty in making the baby latch on to you. So if for inverted nipple, uh, even uh, during the antenatal period, what you can do is like manually stretch and roll the nipple between the thumb and finger several times a day so that it just comes out a little bit. So after delivery, nipple puller can be used by which you can bring out the nipple a little bit. So that like babies uh, will latch on to you and you also have a, a comfortable like hold on so the baby can get attached to you properly. So flat nipples also like uh, nipple puller can be used so as to pull out your nipple. And the other thing would be sore nipples. Okay. So uh, in breastfeeding, uh, we insist so much uh, in latch that is making the baby getting attached to you in a proper way that's very important so though breastfeeding is considered to be a natural process women they need a proper guidance support okay so as to learn it in a right way that's it so if your baby has not latched on to you properly you might end up in having sore nipples so sore nipples uh, can occur because of poor attachment when the babies are not being positioned properly. And at times, uh, frequent washing using soapy water might also lead to excessive dryness 
that in turn will lead to sore nipple and if there is like engorgement or any fissures or any fungal infection also can lead to sore nipples but the most common cause for sore nipples is like uh, improper latch <clears throat> So it's always better not to have soreness. So how do you prevent that? Like by making the baby latch properly. That's it. But having had one, uh, still uh, just try to find out where you're going wrong on with the latch. Improve the baby's attachment and continue to breastfeed. Okay. And because of soreness, uh, because of that pain or like irritation, uh, if you don't continue to feed your baby, it might end up in having engorgement. And babies also will find it difficult to latch on to you when you start it late. So what you are supposed to do is like wash breasts only once a day using soap. Mostly like uh, try to avoid using too much of soap. Avoid medicated lotions and ointments. And gently you can apply your high milk after being fed, like uh, you just whatever you get um, that's called high milk, you just apply it gently onto your nipple and areola after each fit. So the other thing would be uh, engorgement. So engorgement will happen uh, when you delay the breastfeeds or when infrequent breastfeeds are being given. And the other thing, if the baby has not latched on to you properly, how much of a milk you have got, it will not get transferred to your baby. Uh, so, it will end up in having engorgement. So, having had, like once you have got engorgement, that area around the uh, nipple and the areola, the whole breast will become like too heavy and hard so that your babies will find it a bit difficult to latch on to you. Okay. So for which you have to do, what you have to do is just uh, gently like uh, massage, do a hot water fermentation. You can even apply warm packs locally and just try to express the milk prior to feed a little bit so that the area becomes a bit soft uh, so that your baby will find it a bit easier to latch onto you and have a feed from you. So full breast. Uh, it's different from the engorged breast. Full breast is normally if you have like enough secretion, your breast will feel a bit full or heavy before feeding your baby, and uh, it you may not experience any pain, and the breast may not be hard. So that's very common. So if you have like uh, enough secretion, uh, your breast may feel like a bit uh, heavy and full, which will get eased out once you just feed the baby. Whereas engorged to breast, it will be like too painful and the area, uh, the area around the like nipple and the area all like will be a bit hard, will be red, warm and uh, it will be too painful and sometimes you might even have fever. So the next would be, uh, how do I come to know that like my baby is taking enough, okay? So initial few days, mothers will have secretion only in drops. Only when you just make your baby suck out your breast as frequently as possible, your output will start improving. Second thing, all babies will lose weight in the initial few days. Okay, irrespective of the birth weight, irrespective of the weeks they are born, all babies they tend to lose weight in the initial few days, which is very normal. They can lose up to 10% of their birth weight. If the weight loss goes anything beyond 10%, that needs to get sorted out. So usually they tend to lose weight and just or like starts gaining weight by day three or day four or just starts losing weight minimally. And they just uh, regain the birth weight probably by the end of a week's time or 10 days or max of two weeks. Okay. So when your baby passes uh, in a urine, there should be a urine output of minimum six to eight times in a day. Okay. And if the baby has started gaining weight and has reach the birth weight by the end of week's time or even crosses birth weight by two weeks, that itself says that your baby is getting enough from you. Thank you. Any queries will be addressed now. So usually we do delayed cot lamping for uh, 120 seconds, that is for two minutes. If the baby is otherwise doing well, if the baby is breathing well, and doesn't need any extra support, relay cot lapping will be uh, done for 120 seconds, for two minutes. 
so ointment name there are various uh, brand names what we normally like recommend is like lanolin cream lanolin so it's available in the name of like pure lan uh, lansino uh, but the ointment uh, is like uh, lanolin Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Dr. Pooja Matthew, and I'm the obstetrics and gynecology consultant in Women Center by Motherhood. Today, I'll be taking the labor preparations class for you all. Uh, I hope it will be some use for you in the future. So, the main aim of our labor classes is focused on calming both the parents to be. Uh, what are antenatal classes? It, it actually comprises of the exercises, the yoga, breathing techniques that uh, can maintain uh, flexibility and also help uh, build up the stamina for the labor. It uh, also aims in formulating a diet and an eating plan which optimizes the weight gain and good nutrition to the mother. The information is also provided about the eatings, that is don'ts and do's during pregnancy. So I'll be talking basically about the third trimester, what you could expect during labor and now our present scenario in the situation that we right now are, that is COVID along with pregnancy. So the third trimester, what it is, we'll be talking about in general, about the physiological changes and the discomfort that you would experience in the last trimester and how you can overcome these discomforts. As you all know, the uh, pregnancy is divided in three trimesters, the first, second and the third trimester. The first tri uh, trimester comprises of the first 12 weeks of your pregnancy where the growth of the baby and the organogenesis takes place. Second is uh, uh, the second trimester, which starts from the 13th week till the 28th week. And the third trimester is from the 29th week to the 40th week. So the changes that happen in the second trimester is uh, basically because of the body uh, trying to undergo changes to adopt, adapt uh, the growing fetus inside your uterus and providing maximum nutrition to the baby. So it has a couple of changes happening in the blood, in the cardiovascular system, in the respiratory system and gastrointestinal system because again, the whole uterus is occupying the abdomen. So it kind of compromises these systems and uh, obviously there will be compensatory uh, action happening in presence of this. So the in general, what are the changes we'll be talking now? 
in the blood basically there would be increase in the blood cells with increasing clotting factors and increase in the fibrinolytic factor basically to make sure that during your labor you don't lose a lot of blood and maximum blood is provided or the nutrition is provided to the baby there is some uh, chance of having tachycardia increase cardiac output and also heart rate all in favor of the pregnancy to go well and your baby to do well there is displacement of the diaphragm as you know as the uterus is increasing in size you know so it will obviously push the diaphragm up as superiorly and decrease the functional respiratory uh, reserve capacity and there is an increased risk of uh, breathlessness if we are on dyspnea and hyperventilation women may experience nausea and vomiting very typical during pregnancy it happens as early as in the first trimester itself it can profoundly be there also in the third tri trimester in certain amount of women the mood and uh, behavioral changes that we see is because of the way in which the body is undergoing different changes and there is an increased nutritional demand of the baby and the mother so the symptoms that you see is basically nausea vomiting heartburn sometimes uh, constipation which uh, comprises the gastrointestinal system uh, symptoms in the musculoskeletal system women may experience very commonly back pain muscular cramps in the cardiovascular system is like the supine hypotension some women may experience uh, varicose vein and very common symptom is the uh, swelling of the legs called edema respiration there may be a little bit of nasal congestion dyspnea or breathlessness and increased frequency of maturation or urination or incontinence when you have urinary symptoms so how do you overcome all these problems especially when you are experience fatigue and tiredness all the time try to take short naps probably you could have a low intensity exercise also to keep yourself a bit active during pregnancy and eat nutritious snacks try to check you what uh, what's not uh, suffering that you're not suffering from anemia so we need to keep a check on that whether your hemoglobin has dropped so you have a regular check up with your consultant so that that can be picked up try to wear a uh, breathable clothes and bras for uh, uh, you know if you are experiencing sore uh, breasts and buy some uh, breast pads that may be also needed after the baby is born so it's a good time you could uh, purchase it in the third trimester uh, increase uh, in urination is another problem this can be avoided by taking uh, not too much of big drinks uh, you know just before your uh, bedtime and wear a panty liner if in case you are experiencing uh, uh, incontinence of the urine shortness of breath is possible because of again because the uterus is pressing on to the diaphragm so you could uh, probably prop up your head and put a pillow under your head while sleeping shoulders up with your pillows while you are sleeping so this might help you uh, breathe better during this phase try to eat slowly and uh, uh, sip plenty of fluids between the meals avoid uh, lying down because many women experience heart burns especially after eating food or just before eating food so try to keep in hand a bit of antacids that your doctor has prescribed for you if in case you are suffering from this symptom now coming to the back pain uh, try to use some chair that has providing you good support to the back try to sleep with a pillow tucked between your legs this also helps a lot use a heating pad if required over your lower back it may ease up a bit of uh, the tenderness and pain moving on to the varicose veins some women may experience not everyone have this problem but keeping uh, 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 you know moving throughout the day is a good idea try to wear some tights or stockings and keep a propped up uh, position of your legs try to rest it over a stool or a pillow while you are sleeping uh, and uh, this would actually help uh, prevent the pooling of uh, blood in your legs and also this is the same remedy if, in case you are suffering from swelling of the legs so let's talk about the antenatal exercises uh, in 
for most women, the exercises are absolutely safe. It, there is no contraindication. Uh, it also has a beneficial effect on the baby and your own health during the pregnancy and as well after the uh, birth of the baby. The safety aspect of it is that uh, for healthy women in an uncomplicated pregnancy, exercising is considered safe and it does not lead to any complication. Yet, uh, you should take a prior uh, uh, green signal and a clearance from your doctor before you do any sort of exercises. The benefit of the exercise is that it reduces the risk of complications. It eases off pregnancy symptoms and ensures that the uh, healthy weight gain is happening instead of over uh, gain of weight during pregnancy. It prepares your body for labor as well. So the best uh, exercises that you can do during pregnancy is maybe 30 minutes of brisk walking is very good. Uh, some Kegel exercises, some swimming, uh, maybe stationary by cycling or prenatal yoga is good, jogging or dancing. Try to avoid very strenuous uh, exercises like basketball or soccer or hot yoga, skiing or horseback riding, any ice uh, hockey or boxing for that matter. So the benefits of these exercises that it maintains a healthy weight gain. It prevents the new uh, uh, requirement of the mother, like you know, lifting the baby, carrying, bending, pushing, prams, and changing nappies. You need a lot of energy and a lot a strong back for that. So I guess uh, it should be keep kept in mind as much as act you are active, it is good for you. It strengthens you and it helps your body to accommodate for the changes that is happening in the body. It reduces the risk of developing lower back pain and pelvic pain as well. So developing a strong legs and good squatting and lifting techniques is essential, especially when you are trying and uh, attempting for a normal delivery. Develop a upper body strength to prevent uh, sustaining any back, hip, neck or waistline injuries so exercises also improves the circulation and it helps to reduce the swelling that may occur in the body it also enhances the mood and you feel a sense of well-being fit you feel right so reducing uh, reduction is there also in the risk of developing uh, postpartum depression uh, it develops a routine for you to mobilize your spine and your muscles to prevent any stiffness which would be associated with breastfeeding. Exercises also improve in the metabolism. It helps in the digestion and reduction of constipation or constipation for that matter. To uh, reduce the risk of negative impact on the fetal development also. So you should basically do as much as possible uh, be active in your pregnancy. In the long term of benefits of uh, Kegel exercise, I would like to emphasize out of all the exercises that you do, it's because it will help you post delivery as well. It, it, there won't be any uh, urinary symptoms or uh, you know any uh, urgency of passing urine during uh, post delivery and uh, while intercourse or any activity you would be feeling better your pelvic muscles will be strong. So doing this Kegel exercises will definitely help you. Now I'll talk to you about labor. Uh, many women are anxious and uh, very, very uh, skeptical about when we talk about labor. It's the most natural thing. So best way to face this head on is be preparing yourself. Uh, it's a good idea to have a hospital bag with all the essentials that you may be wanting for an expecting mother. It could be things that you might be needing during labor, post-delivery, like nursing pads, and, uh, sanitary napkins, toiletries, anything that you think might be required, like socks or slippers or anything output that you might need during the stay in the hospital and when you are going back home. For the baby, again, it's the same thing. You need to use nappies or uh, you know gentle wipes maybe uh, diapers, wrap or clothing for the baby cap, dip, uh, mittens, whatever you think you can personalize it and keep it in your hospital bag. So the best way to prepare yourself is think positively. Prepare yourself mentally and exercise yourself regularly. 
you have to have a sound knowledge. So reading is a good thing to do. Be prepared. And the options that are provided by your doctor, choose them wisely, which is good for you, which works well for your body. But it's not necessary what worked for somebody else, your relative, your friend may work for you. So try to uh, know yourself better and choose things wisely. The question is uh, intelligently try to eat uh, healthy Connect daily and relax and breathe. The birth will be a smooth journey for sure. So next thing is we will talk about what is true labor pains and what are false labor pains. So true labor pains is when proper contractions are set in and you are getting it in a regular interval. It will be accompanied with cervical changes. There would be a dilatation and the head of the baby trying to drop into the pelvis. Uh, false labor pain, it would be irregular. It won't be regular. It won't be accompanied with all the cervical changes. And it would uh, not have a, a complete uh, drop of the head of the baby into the pelvis. So the, what are the warning signs of labor pains? You need to know this now because anytime when this occurs, you need to uh, uh, consult your uh, uh, doctor and come to the hospital immediately when you are experiencing any contraction you need to come any show that is a plug of mucus with from your uh, cervix that is the entrance of the womb or the uterus comes out then you should come and uh, show yourself any backache or urgency to pass toilet it could be because the head of the baby is pressing into the bowels and then hence you are feeling the sensation Sometimes uh, women come with uh, water breaking, that is rupture of memory. That is also a time you have to come and show yourself to the hospital. As you are admitted in the hospital, the things that you need to be prepared and expect is, first thing we try to check is the uh, heartbeat of the baby. We'll be connected on something called as an electronic fetal monitoring. Then uh, the duty consultant will examine you and try to see whether how much you are how far you are in labor so basically that is what is done uh you need to understand that it's a teamwork it doesn't happen without one with one person it is a teamwork and it involves experienced staff nurses uh there's an active role of the staffs in the labor room and also the experienced duty consultant who would time to time come and check on your progress there are stages of labor, basically the first stage, second stage, third stage, and the fourth stage. The first stage of the labor is basically when uh, there is an onset of contraction and then it will be uh, accompanied by dilatation of the cervix and it completely dilates to the state where the head is uh, visible. That is called as the first stage of labor. Second stage of labor is the beginning of uh, from the full dilatation of the cervix until the end of the delivery of the baby, basically out of the uterus, is called the second stage. Third stage is nothing but the placenta stage, where it begins right after the birth of the baby and it ends with the delivery of the uh, placenta. Fourth stage is the most important stage where we are kept keeping the mother in monitory. Um, it begins after the delivery of the placenta and continues over to about one hour to four hours after the delivery where we keep the father in the labor ward. So the uh, stages of labor I've told. So first stage of labor for a primary gravida is different from the multi gravida. It's much longer for a primary gravida. It could be around 16 to 18 hours. It can be also uh, uh, short for some women, but in, in general, multi gravida that is uh, with which your second or third pregnancy, it could be around uh, 7 to 12 hours. Second stage of the labor is the full dilatation. That could uh, be lasting for about 1 to 2 hours. In uh, second uh, gravida or third gravida, it could be just about 20 minutes. Third stage can be anywhere about few minutes. So that's how it is. Now, how do we manage the early labor is basically we allow you to go into spontaneous labor that's called as spontaneous progression. Sometimes what happens is after the date is over, we need to induce 
because we can't let it uh, prolong the labor I and mean, prolong the pregnancy it needs to be terminated if the uh, pains don't start on their own there are different uh, induction agents and we use uh, them time to time and we decide when the induction needs to be done according to your convenience and the hospital uh, doctor's uh, uh, decision so that's how it is done then it involves a uh, uh, monitoring of the mother and the fetus and it can be done in the ward in the early labors exercises needs to be done and you can do it along with the staff so you need to understand for normal delivery to occur things the things that are needed is there should be uh, adequate pelvis that is the baby should be able to pass through the uh, available space in the pelvis Second thing it needs is it should be they should be accompanied with proper dilatation of the cervix and also effacement of the cervix. Along with that, the head of the baby also needs to descend down. Sometimes happens is that there is dilatation, but the head of the baby doesn't come down. It might be because of the wrong position. It may be posterior, which may not aid in the early or easy delivery. So that could lead to the delay or not delivery of the normal delivery basically. So now I will be talking about what is uh, painless labor. Painless delivery we can do it here in our hospital where we have the option of giving you epidural. It's a combination of narcotic drugs and along with the local anesthesia. This way you feel uh, uh, kind of uh, comfortable your uh, vaginal muscles are more relaxed and it also aids in the delivery of the baby along with the pain management. So epidural is injection that is given over the area of your spinal cord that is on or around the dura matter. So when it is given, it is actually given after you are about 3 centimeters in dilatation. So epidural, uh, there are certain complications, but most of the time it is very, very uh, safe for women. Sometimes there is a drop in uh, blood pressure. Uh, if there is no as such risk, uh, we can give fluids and build it up, no problem in that. There may be some uh, women who might experience a bit of uh, allergy by uh, in the form of itching. Uh, but it may disappear once the epidural is stopped. So uh, medications to relieve that sensation is also given. It might sometimes also lead to prolongation of the second stage of labor and it reduces the urge to bear down and occasionally it might uh, require an instrumental delivery of the baby. But it's not so always. So some women may experience a bit of headache or a tingling sensation in, or pizza needle sensation in the uh, leg area after the baby is born but such problems may also subside uh, over a period of time so backache is a common problem that happens during pregnancy and often it continues afterwards but it is not actually a reason why it is there because of an epidural uh, it is good evidence that epidural does not cause any long-term back pain. So it is a myth that many people think that after getting a spinal uh, anesthesia or an epidural, you will end up having a back pain. So it is not so. Just like a surgery is never done without anesthesia, so also this technique is available to manage the labor pains. So the indications are there certain that will lead for a cesarean section. There are times when normal delivery is not possible and it requires a cesarean section. That is when uh, the head of the baby is bigger than the uh, pelvis or the pelvis is smaller for a normal sized uh, fetus. So mal presentation is another thing when the head of the baby is up that is in breech position or transverse line in case of multiple pregnancy. If there is severe uh, hypertension during the uh, pregnancy or if there are conditions where the fetus is in distress or there is very low birth weight, then, then it lands up in having a uh, cesarean section. Sometimes even with induction, many women may not progress and that may lead to a, a cesarean section. Babies can enter this world in only two ways, that is 
a pregnant woman may have either a normal delivery or a surgical delivery by cesarean section. But the ultimate goal for a doctor, for everyone, is to have both, uh, to have mother and baby absolutely safe. And both the delivery methods have to be safely done to give birth to a healthy baby. So uh, the National Institute of uh, Clinical Excellence has revised its judgment and now it says that overall cesarean section is more riskier than vaginal delivery, though the risks are different. The risk of cesarean is related to having a major surgery, but there are longer recovery times also and that, that can also interfere with the initiation of the breastfeeding. Women may also have vaginal birth, but there will be higher risk of having internal injury. So there is a risk versus benefit in both the mode of deliveries. What's your role in this labor is basically women are coached to take a deep breath at the beginning of the contraction and then hold the breath as long and as hard as possible while bearing down so that it aids in the delivery and descent of the baby's head. There should be spontaneous bearing down sensation. Basically, breathe comfortably till the urge comes where you need to push and it, the urge is uh, irresistible. So the next, take a deep breath and hold it and slowly release it while bearing down for about 5 to 7 seconds. After bearing down, release any remaining oxygen and breathe comfortably until the next contraction comes. Now let's talk about the pregnancy and COVID uh, pandemic. So as you all know, uh, there is no evidence that the pregnant women are more likely to get a seriously ill pill from uh, coronavirus. But yes, they are in a vulnerable group. The second wave we have noticed that uh, Pregnant women are in a more uh, thrombogenic state, so the complications can be very uh, much during pregnancy. So it's important that uh, all women get vaccinated after the first trimester. But pregnant women can be included in the list of uh, moderate risk. That's what we are saying, the vulnerable risk. So this is because the women are, can be at uh, sometimes more risk of developing viruses like uh, uh, flu. It is not clear if this happens with coronavirus, but because it's a new virus, it's safer to include pregnant women in the moderate risk group. And it may be possible for you to pass the coronavirus to the baby before birth. But uh, when it happens, baby have got better also. So it's a good news that uh, for children, it is not so severe. Uh, there is, of course, some evidence of uh, sudden IUDs happening in the second wave. In the first wave, we thought that it doesn't cause any miscarriage. But in the uh, second wave, we are seeing that suddenly uh, women come with uh, seizures or other sort of complications during pregnancy. So the mantra now is to basically get all women, maximum women, uh, vaccinated as much as possible, as early as possible before the third wave hits us. So the, till then, what we can do is social distancing, proper hand sanitization, uh, uh, stay at indoors, have proper uh, uh, appointments, prenatal appointments with your doctor, Take proper vaccination, avoid crowded places, wear your mask, uh, and be uh, very watchful about the safety of your children, a child, especially people who are going outside, try to be more cautious because they are getting uh, exposed outside and the, then ultimately the mother gets exposed to this. So now I will talk about the hospital policy during uh, COVID situation. Any patient who is entering the hospital shall be screened for symptoms and signs for COVID. All uh, are advised to wear the face mask or gloves on the hospital premises. Children are not permitted. Uh, attendants are only allowed in situations where the family needs to discuss anything very important and uh, requires any judgment that by the uh, consultant. 
Now, the COVID test is mandatory for all patients and attenders in case of admission. Uh, one attender is allowed to stay with the patient throughout the hospital stay, and the attender shall not be allowed in labor room, though, during the delivery. Husband and the attender staying with the patient is allowed to see the baby and the mother after the delivery with proper hand sanitation and proper uh, protective wear. Other visitors, however, are not allowed inside the hospital because of the uh, precautions that we are taking. Thank you. If there are any queries or questions, I'm happy to answer. Any questions? Uh, somebody has asked, I'm in seven months uh, pregnant. I can't take iron supplements orally, though the tablets uh, by food, getting vomiting, hemoglobin is less than nine. How to increase the hemoglobin? So basically, uh, if you are uh, having uh, uh, gastritis and problem like that, or vomiting, what you can do is try to have food and after one hour of consumption of food, try to have the tablet. This might add to have food that will promote uh, its absorption. So once you have the iron tablet, after half an hour, if you have a citrus based food uh, juice or a fruit, it improves uh, absorption of iron. Like vitamin C is supposed to be improving absorption of iron. So anybody who, any factors to be checked before taking vaccination, uh, the general vaccine uh, queries are there. Once you come to the hospital, a doctor will ask you the queries. Once that is uh, uh, settled and uh, ticked off, you will be advised for the vaccine and go ahead with the vaccine. What should be the weight of the patient in the second trimester? And how should the weight increase each month? The weight of the baby, uh, mother is basically total in the pregnancy, there should be a weight gain of not more than 11 kgs if your BMI is normal, that is between 19 to 25. If you are overweight, then you should not gain more than about 8 to 10 kgs. And in case of uh, uh, obese ladies, in total 9 months, you should not gain more than 8 kgs. In second trimester, every week, less than 1 kg or 2 weeks, 1 kg should be increased, that's it. Don't worry about the baby not growing or not uh, gaining weight. It will grow. You need not uh, monitor the weight gain of the mother as long as the growth of the baby is fine. Any other questions? Any other queries? Welcome. Any other questions? Tips of fast dilatation. <laughs> well, uh, all the tips is basically for by doing being active during your uh, uh, pregnancy. As I've always emphasized, being active may aid in the delivery of the baby. Sometimes even being active might not help. It is because sometimes the position of the baby has to be also correct. If the position of the baby sometimes is posterior, then uh, it has to, dilatation becomes very slow. So it depends upon person to person, case by case to case basis. But most of the time, being active, doing regular exercises, squatting, all these would aid in fast dilatation. And uh, naturally going into labor. Any other queries? Any other questions? You can drop in your questions later on and we can answer them if anybody has any queries. I'll be happy to answer.
So when it's asking sleeping position, uh, sleep position actually doesn't matter till about 20 weeks of gestation. After 20 weeks of gestation, it's better to actually take uh, either the left side or the right side. You should not sleep on your back because it will apply the pressure on the major vessels and it will cause the swelling of your legs basically by pooling of the legs and um, blood in the legs. So after 20 weeks of gestation, either you sleep on the left side or the right side of your which is better, Covaxin, Covid shield? It depends upon the uh, if there is no comorbidities like diabetes, hypertension, or anything. Covid shield can be given to a patient. Covid shield apparently is uh, expected uh, abroad if you are traveling during pregnancy. Otherwise, Covaxin is the vaccine given for diabetic mothers or hypertensive mothers or post delivery mothers. Any other questions? Whatever your queries are, you could drop by it in your uh, question box and we can look through them and probably answer them. Okay, I guess nobody else has any questions. If you have any doubts, you can always come back to us. Uh, no, somebody is asking, is it mandatory to have intercourse to ease of labor delivery, normal delivery? It's not actually indicated as such. Uh, I don't know from where this has been told. Just the physical activity and uh, stimulation of the uh, breast sometimes causes the release of a hormone called oxytocin that could lead to labor pains to come. All it will do maybe might cause rupture of membranes or infection if uh, uh, proper protection is not used while having intercourse. It's uh, totally the patient's uh, discretion uh, whether they want to do or not. But there is no nothing indicated as such mandatory to have in the course to ease for normal delivery. Okay, fine. I guess that's it. Uh, if any queries are there, you can leave your question and we'll be answering them later on when I see them. Okay, thank you.
Uh, good evening all. This is Sangeeta. I'm a consultant physiotherapist and pregnancy and postnatal educator here at Women's Center by Motherhood, Karmatu. Uh, today I'm not going to teach you any exercise, but we are going to see about the what are the do's and don'ts, how you should prepare yourself, how you should keep your body uh, flexible uh, without pain uh, in the pregnancy as well as in the after delivery. Okay, uh, how you have to manage the pain, how you should prepare yourself for the delivery and uh, how you should manage the pain during the delivery and after the delivery. Uh, these are the things we are going to see today. Before that, who can exercise? First, we see that, okay, uh, why I am not going to teach any exercise now? Because uh, people are just following, simply they are following and doing the exercises with the YouTube and the Google. But you should not do like that. Uh, you should consult your physiotherapist or your uh, childbirth educator first. Then you should start the exercise, okay? Everyone's body is difficult, uh, different. So you should consult your uh, therapist and you should get a customized exercise plan for your body, okay? That is the main thing. Like that only you should follow the exercise, then you should uh, you should start the exercise. Before starting the exercise also, you should consult your uh, gynecologist. Without your gynecologist knowledge, you should not exercise. Okay, uh, when you can start the exercise first, after the 14th week, okay? After the first trimester, first three months, you should not do, uh, there is no need to do any exercise. You just take a, rest uh, simply keep yourself uh, uh, comfortable first okay because in that first trimester you mostly you have a vomiting nausea vomiting kind of sensation vomiting and gentle tiredness increased body temperature kind of things when you will have so you uh, then almost uh, maximum you have a difficulty in the food intake so when you take a food you feel like vomiting some uh, foods will not suit you so kind of things will be that so you must uh, take rest just keep your body comfortable okay after the second uh, after the first trimester when you enter into the second trimester you can start the exercise okay uh, after consulting your gynecologist okay uh, if your uh, cervix length is not uh, if it is not short, you can start the exercise, okay? The cervix length is uh, short. Actually, cervix is the mouth of the uterus. If it is uh, fine, then you can start the exercise. Uh, then you are uh, hemoglobin, uh, then other com uh, components, like if you have a hypertension or a severe thyroid, then you should not exercise. Then if you have a previous history of any abortion, uh, threatened abortion, that is called as kind of things. Uh, if you have those things, you should not uh, start the exercise in the second trimester. You can start it in the third trimester. Uh, then if you have a, a low placenta, uh, that is uh, the placenta will be there in the mouth of the uterus. In that case, you should not exercise. Uh, reminding, if you have any uh, severe kind of infection, uh, your, if you have a fall or any surgery in the previous time, uh, before the pregnancy, in that case, you should not exercise in the second trimester. But you can start it in the third trimester if the things are okay um kind of exercise like uh, general flexibility exercises we call it as kind of exercise you can do it in the second trimester that is for the uh, flexibility of the muscles also for the prevention of uh, pain that is called as um, 
muscle stiffness okay uh, in the second trimester first trimester you feel a kind of stiffness in your body that is mainly due to the increased body temperature when you are pregnant your body temperature will increase little bit okay that will induce a uh, stiffness in your muscle that's why we are doing the flexibility exercise in the second trimester uh, when you enter into the third trimester we mainly focus on the pelvis area um, most of the people will start the exercise in the second trimester uh, some will start in this first trimester itself like a uh, pelvic uh, stretching exercises that you should not start in the second trimester when you enter into the third trimester you can start the pelvic floor exercises uh, because uh, your cervix length uh, at the kind of everything will be normal but if you start the exercise uh, that may induce a, uh, com uh, some kind of uh, labor signs okay you feel pain or uh, any leaking or a bloody discharge kind of things will be there those are the signs of labor actually uh, so uh, you should not start the pelvic floor exercise in the second trimester but you can start it in the uh, third trimester that is when you enter into the seventh month you can start the pelvic floor exercises uh, next thing uh, if you are working not working based on that also the exercise prescription will vary okay you should get the customized exercise plan uh, just keep in mind don't forget this thing uh, just following the youtube or something facebook like that you should not exercise that will lead to preterm labor uh, uh, if you are in the 36th week only your baby will grow in a full form okay before that the uh, growing process will be taken there so you should get the customized exercise that's why you should meet an educator then you should follow the exercise uh, please don't forget that most of the people are starting the exercise in the first trimester and second trimester that will not suit your body when you are pregnant okay you should get the correct exercise then you can start the exercise with the monitoring of the uh, your educator like that you should do uh, then maximum water intake uh, there is no limit two liter or three liter like that not there but frequently you should take some water that will keep your body hydrated uh, then if you are uh, working you should sit for a long time you must avoid that actually every half an hour 45 minutes once at least uh, two or three minutes gap you should give just take a small walk just stand and do the activity like that you can do uh, if you are working in the if you are using an office chair also you should use the cushion in the back as well as in the lower portion you should use it to avoid the lower back pain and the lower abdominal pain uh, next uh, uh, the lying sleeping position and the sitting position which is totally uh, based on your comfort it will vary to everyone uh, mostly you can uh, you should lie on left side uh, wh what is the reason for the left side lying is uh, when you are on the left side your circulation uh, your digestion everything will be good when you go to the uh, right side lying position the maximum blood vessels are there on the right side if you lie on the right side it will uh, interrupt the circulation so if you are on the right side for a long time when you change the position it will induce a, a kind of hypotension we call it as in the medical term kind of a dizziness or a fainting we usually generally now we use the term dizziness we feel it like that so we should avoid the right lying position for a long time but you can you go to the position for the relaxation for five ten minutes after the um one hour of food okay immediately after having the food you should you should not lie on the right side uh, but after one hour you can go to that position then you can use the semi uh, lying position like a lightly elevated position you can go to that position after the one hour of food you can do that then uh, generally people will have a incontinence in the first trimester mostly in that case also automatically the problem will go uh, like uh, if you have a severe incontinence that is urine leakage without control it will leak your panty will be wet after some time after uh, urinating so that time what you can do is uh, you can do a some uh, basic kind of uh, kegel exercise there are various method of uh, kegel exercise uh, you just meet your uh, therapist and get a customized exercise that is called it as kegel exercise that also you should uh, consult your therapist and you should get the advice uh, don't simply follow any kind of exercise because uh, i already told you now the body will vary 
the exercise should not suit everyone so you must consult the therapist and do the exercise next the walking people will walk for a one hour one and a half hour kind of uh, walking they do that is a very long time that you should not you must uh, not do that like a uh, 30 minutes 40 minutes kind of uh, intermittent walking you can do that will be comfortable for you uh, what will happen uh, if you walk for a one hour one and a half hour uh, you will go for a dehydration that will lead to another unnecessary things like a cramping leg swelling kind of things will be there some people will get uh, uh, back strain that leads to back pain so those are the things you should avoid you can do by intermittent walking in the 30 40 minutes you just separate it walking for 10 minutes take a small break take some water then you continue the exercise uh, continue the walking then again 5 10 minutes break then again 10 minutes like that you should walk now if you do like that it will be very much comfortable for you you would like to walk again if you are doing a walking for 1 hour 1 and a half hour you feel very tired after the walking or the next day so it will not suit everyone because she is doing 1 hour walking she is comfortable and not able to do the 1 hour walking you know you should not say like that it will vary to everyone but in intermittent walking will be comfortable for most of the people some people may uh, can more than that that is okay but uh, not everyone should follow the same long walking protocol uh, next uh, the pelvic floor exercises we are starting in the third trimester after that labor preparation how you should prepare yourself for the labor what are the process will be there in the uh, labor uh, kind of things we teach here we counsel the uh, partners husband and wife we teach them uh, how you should prepare how you have to manage what are the complication what are the things uh, will be there after during the labor after the labor uh, then after 2 3 days of the delivery what you should do how you should start the kind of things also uh, we teach them here like that you should uh, stick on to them just follow the instruction what they are telling you uh, without uh, your therapist or doctor's knowledge don't do anything don't follow the people's instruction just follow the medical person's instruction okay i finish my session with this i already told you i'm not going to teach any exercise if you have any other doubts you can ask me in the comment can go anywhere you can learn from anyone but please don't stick to youtube and uh, facebook just get the advice from the correct person nowadays most of the preterm labor are due to the these unnecessary kind of exercises which you are following the uh, from facebook and the youtube so the unnecessary things there is no need to follow the facebook and the youtube uh, exercises you just get a customized exercise again again i'm insisting you that for that anyone have doubt when to start how to start any complications hope you are all clear with this Arna, you asked me for the Kegel exercise, uh, but I told you, na, you just consult your therapist and get the advice. Uh, when and how to do it? Actually, uh, there is no compulsion to do Kegel exercise in the pregnancy. If you you can start it in the second, third trimester, but if you have an incontinence in the first trimester, you must do that. breathing techniques breathing techniques uh, it's generally for the relaxation and the uh, and for the good oxygenation we are doing the breathing techniques uh, we use it in the pregnancy as well as in the labor time i told you na the labor counseling in that time we teach you the breathing techniques for the labor separately here we are teaching the labor uh, exercises pregnancy exercises uh the pregnancy counseling and means uh, do's and don'ts in the pregnancy uh, for the partners both for the husband and wife everyone uh then to the mother and parents 
next in the labor we are teaching them we are counseling them for the labor everything we are doing here we generally have a two sessions here uh, first one uh, pregnancy exercise session the second one labor management and the preparation uh, preparation session in the 30th week for the labor pregnancy session in the 14th week Here, generally, our gynecologist will advise for the uh, exercise session. If they are once clear with everyone, they will advise to take the uh, pregnancy exercise session. Then they follow it in the 30th week for the labor session. Okay. Hope you are all clear with this. Thank you. I have done my session. Dietitian one will continue that. One more question is there, yes, birth ball exercise, is, uh, it will help a lot in the labor, also in the pregnancy, because uh, exercising in the um, labor time alone will not help you. If you start the exercise in the second trimester itself, it will help a lot. Uh, the ball exercise, one of the exercise which helps in the labor, it will shorten the labor duration, it helps in the faster dilatation of your cervix. So it will be very much helpful. But uh, I told you now, based on the things, you can start the uh, exercise. In the exercise session, we teach you the ball exercise also. Thank you.
Hello, good evening to all. I am Chandra Kila, clinical nutritionist and dietitian from your Women's Center by Motherhood Hospital, Quanto Branch. Uh, first of all, congratulations to all. Uh, all pregnancy people are lurking. Eh? So, first trimester, second time, sorry, second trimester and third trimester people are lurking. You will again in the time that you will be able to do it. I will explain to you. Third trimester people are lurking. You will be able to do it. You will be able to do it. You will be able then you know, major the baby's growth almost so for last trimester baby weight then uh, weight baby weight growth scan almost unga doctors so adiketha mariyum nama diet plan maathikalam so such panda, thick panda, they all have a new experience. I reckon. They all have a second gravid. That is, two other pregnancy people are being. But every pregnancy is very, very new experience. First of all, pregnancy weighting. I reckon. I reckon. I reckon. I reckon. I reckon. It's a first time of the law of five to two kgs. Very curriculum, fill away when the weight gain are come curriculum because in enough first time the nausea, vomiting, morning sickness, and the medicine symptoms like you cut the Nadam look and the local weight gain in the record. Even second time of the five to six kgs are looking on gain from now. In the time of Patina, appetite the last year, first time of the weight gain, Ilana, and I put a second time of the Nala or Lakum will be taken to Kumodu, last year. Even third trimester, three to five kgs in the Pothu. In the third trimester, the baby would wait in Allave, Vigin Avanga. So on the trimester, Leo, Namavanthi, Vigin, the control Pana, Matunda, Matta, gestation and diabetic, or lack of tension, and the very complications in the Namana, escape Pathamudio. So, why is nutrition is so important in pregnancy time? Abhi paathenge na kandi pa. Ino oru kollan theye. Alaga ungi loda garpa payil vechu oru vaiku oru viru kudkrong abhi na. Anu viru valtha thikka. Anu kollan theki enna na nutrients theye. Athi ke thamari food unga mule ma matto na kudta agno. Unga plasan thato pil kudi mule ma matto na nutrients apko unga loda carry out unga loda oxygen supply zella me athi valiya matto na kudno. Thamma medical ay vlogo kandi purichit ko. Ida kvera valiya ekila. Kanzi vanu thende delivery vareko mother only responsible. So, in the Vishay Thala, now mothers, Ella, may ladies, Patina, Lame Kala, the Tuki Sola, as a mother, now the Rumba Prada, now a feel from the Pudi Vishu and the Vishay Matunda. In after delivery, Kapana, Daddy, our town, grandmas, grandpa, Ella, may Pathaka Puranga. So, Ungalo to Kutia, Ming Murusa, Pathaka Pura time, in the nine to ten months, in the pregnancy time. So, in the time, Lunga energy level and the Lava Pirkun under the Mukio. Then the pregnancy common related symptoms, pathina, heart burns, and nausea, anemia, iron, hemoglobin level, and the common symptoms are coming. If you have a disease, you minimize the disease. We have to get healthy nutrients. That's very important. So, we have to get the defects and reduce the nutrients. We have to get the nutrients and nutrients. We have to get the nutrients. Both the weight, the baby or the birth of the weight, and sure can come with you. So, in the wish of the birth of the world, nutrition is important to the Irapathina Vishanda. Then, in the Marie Futsala Edicilam Abdina, cereals and the grains, other food groups, Pathina, cereals, pulses, foods, vegetables, yellow food groups run the Edicum. It's a single nutrient, worry or a food mutton on the thalidite, and a real pregnancy with the thalidite is cut us so, even during the pregnancy time, a single nutrient focus is not necessary. But to take out all types of food groups and maintain your balanced diet. So, in the cereals, wheat, rice, ranki, bajra, jowar, etc. All cereals are Whole grains Then, carbohydrates, calories, fiber, vitamins, B vitamins, and iron, and some proteins. Then fortified cereals can supply other vitamins and minerals also. 
ஸோ இந்த மாதிரி சிறுதானியங்களை நீங்கள் தாராளமாக எடுத்துக்கலாம் ப்ரெக்னன்சியில் மில்லட்ஸ் எடுக்கலாமா அப்படின்ற நிறைய பேர்த்துக்கு டவுட் இருக்கு கண்டிப்பாக நீங்கள் எடுக்கலாம் நெக்ஸ்ட் வந்து பல்சஸ் அண்ட் லெண்டல்ஸ் ப்ரோட்டீன்ஸை வந்து நம்ம பேலன்ஸ் பண்ணணும்னா கண்டிப்பாக நமக்கு வந்து ப்ரோட்டீன்ஸ் இருக்கணும் ஈவன் வெஜிடேரியனாக இருக்கட்டும் நான் வெஜிடேரியன் நான் வெஜிடேரியன் நம்மளே நம்ம டெய்லி எம்பி போகிறத விட நமக்கு வந்து கொஞ்சம் வெஜிடேரியன் ப்ரோட்டீன் இருக்கிறப்ப நமக்கு பெட்டருங்க ஸோ யூ கேன் மேக் சூப்பாக ஏதாவது மேக் பண்ணலாம் இல்லை போரேஜ் ஆர் ஸ்டூ வித் குக்குடர் லெட்டில்ஸ் அந்த மாதிரி கூட நீங்கள் மேக் பண்ணி சாப்பிட்லாம் அதாவது வெஜிடபிள்ஸில் இல்லை கீரை கூட்டு இல்லை பொர் பொரியல் அந்த மாதிரி பண்ணுறீங்கன்னா இப்போ ஒரு கேபேஜ் பொரியல் பண்ணுறீங்கன்னா அது ஃபுல் அண்ட் ஃபுல் கேபேஜ் மட்டுமே இல்லாமல் அது கூட கொஞ்சம் கடலை பருப்பு இதில் போட்டு நீங்கள் மிங்கிள் பண்ணலாம் கீரை ஏதாவது ஆட் பண்ணுறீங்க அப்படின்னா அது கூட கொஞ்சம் மூங்கா ஸோ இது கொஞ்சம் பாசி பருப்பு ஆட் பண்ணி நீங்கள் சாப்பிடும்போது உங்களோட வெஜிடபிள்ஸோட டிஷ்ஷஸோட நியூட்ரியன்ஸை வந்து நீங்கள் என்கரேஜ் பண்ணி கொடுக்க முடியும் ஸோ டேஸ்ட் வைஸும் கூட டிஃப்ரெண்ட்டுங்க தென் ஹெல்த்தி ஃபேக்ட் ஹெல்த்தி ஃபேக்ட்ஸ் பார்த்தீங்கன்னா உங்களோட தேர்ட் ட்ரைமஸ்டர் வந்து ரொம்ப ரொம்ப முக்கியம் ஏன்னா இது வந்து அடுத்தது நம்ம சுட்ட டு லாக்டேஷன் டெலிவரி இல்லைங்களா ஸோ அடுத்து டெலிவரி முடிச்சு நம்ம தாய்ப்பால் ஊடுறதுக்குண்டான காலம் போது நம்ம ஹெல்த்தி ஃபேட்டாக இப்போ தேர்ட் ட்ரைமஸ்டர் வந்து ஸ்டார்ட் பண்ணிட்டோம் அப்படின்னா ப்ளஸ் மூன் போர்டு சர்க்குலேஷன் லெவலும் கூட நல்லா இருக்கும் ஸோ ஹெல்த்தி ஃபேட்ஸ் என்னென்ன எடுக்கலாம்னா நட்ஸ் சீட்ஸ் அவகேடோஸ் ஆலிவ் ஆயில்ஸ் எக் சால்மன் ஃபிஷ் யோகட் சீஸ் இது எல்லாமே பார்த்தீங்கன்னா ஹெல்த்தி ஃபேன்ஸுங்க தென் ஆயில் ஸ்நாக்ஸ் இந்த ப்ராசஸ்ட் ஃபுட்டு சாச்சுரேட்டட் ஃபேட்டி ஆசட்ஸ் ட்ரான்ஸ்பேட்ஸ் உள்ள பேக்கரி ஐட்டம்ஸ் இந்த பேக்கரி ஃபுட் ஐட்டம்ஸ் இது எல்லாமே கூட அவாய்ட் பண்ணிக்கோங்க அது வந்து இஸ் அன்ஹெல்த்தி ஃபேட்ஸ் தீஸ் ஆர் தி ஹெல்த்தி ஃபேன்ஸுங்க ஃப்ரூட்ஸ் பார்த்தீங்கன்னா ஃப்ரெஷ் ஃப்ரூட்ஸ் எல்லாம் இஸ் ரிச்சம் விட்டமின் ஏ அண்ட் சி அண்ட் ப்ளைன் வந்து இதோட ப்ராப்பர் ஃபங்க்ஷனிங் பார்த்தீங்கன்னா உங்களோட பிளசண்டாவோட ஃபங்க்ஷனிங்க்கு ரொம்ப ரொம்ப ஃப்ரூட்ஸ் வந்து ஹெல்ப் பண்ணி கொடுக்கும் ஸோ அந்த உங்களோட விட்டமின்ஸ் எல்லாமே பார்த்தீங்கன்னா விட்டமின்ஸ் அந்த மினரல்ஸ் எல்லாமே உங்களுடைய இம்யூனிட்டி சிஸ்டம் பூஸ்ட் பண்ணுறதுக்கு உண்டான தேவையான நியூட்ரியன்ஸே பார்த்தீங்கன்னா ஃப்ரூட்ஸ்லாம் தான் அதிகமாக இருக்கு நிறைய பேர்த்துக்கு ப்ரெக்னன்சி டைமில் ரொம்ப ரொம்ப சப்போர்ட்டிவாக இருந்திருக்கும் ஃப்ரூட்ஸ் ஏன்னா நிறைய பேர்த்துக்கு எது சாப்பிட்றது வாமிட்டிங் சாப்பிட முடியல அப்படின்ற பேஷண்ட்ஸ் எல்லாருமே கூட நீங்கள் ஃப்ரூட்ஸோட தான் மேனேஜ் பண்ணியிருக்கீங்க இன்னொன்று டயபெட்டிக் பேஷண்ட்ஸ் கூட ஃப்ரூட்ஸ் சாப்பிட்லாம் சுகர் வந்தாலே ஃப்ரூட்ஸ் சாப்பிடக்கூடாது அப்படின்னு கிடையாது அவங்களுக்குன்னு சில பர்டிகுலர் ஃப்ரூட்ஸ் இருக்கு ஸோ அவங்களும் இந்த ஃப்ரூட்ஸை நம்ம என்ஜாய் பண்ணலாம் என்ன தேர்ட் ட்ரைமஸ்டர்லன்னு வரும்போது இந்த கிவி ஸ்ட்ராபெரிஸ் பண்ணனா மேலே சிட்ரஸ் ஃப்ரூட்ஸ் எல்லாம் கொஞ்சம் ஆட் பண்ணிக்கிறது பெட்டருங்க இது வந்து உங்களோட ரிச்சின் விட்டமின் சி ஸோ உங்களோட அயன் அப்சார்ப்ஷனை ரொம்ப ரொம்ப யூஸ்ஃபுல்லாக கொண்டு வரும் ஹெச்பி லெவலில் வந்து டெலிவரிக்கு முன்னாடி கொஞ்சம் ரைஸ் பண்ணி வச்சுக்கிறது பெட்டருங்க இப்போ ஒர்க்கிங் விமனாக இருந்தீங்க அப்படின்னா ஸோ உங்களோட ஃபுட் ஸ்லைசஸோ அந்த மாதிரி ஸ்நாக்ஸ் அதாவது கூட நீங்கள் பிரேக் டைமில் பேக் பண்ணி கொண்டு போய் அங்கே சாப்பிட்றது நல்லதுங்க ஈவன் ஆஃபீஸ் டைமில் போய் பிஸ்கட்டோ இல்லை ஆஃபி கஃபே ஏரியாவில் போயிட்டு பேக்கர் ஐட்டம்ஸ் அந்த மாதிரி ஏதாவது பப் கேக்கு அந்த மாதிரி சாப்பிட்றத விட நீங்கள் ஃப்ரூட்ஸை வந்து ஸ்நாக்காக பேக் பண்ணி எடுத்துகிட்டு போகிறது ரொம்ப ரொம்ப யூஸ்ஃபுல்லாக இருக்குங்க உங்கள் பேபிக்கு நீங்கள் ஹெல்த்தியான ஃபுட்ஸ் தான் கொடுக்குறீங்கன்றது ஒரு சாட்டிஸ்ஃபேக்ஷனும் உங்களுக்கு கிடைக்கும் So take all type of fruits again. Even papaya and pineapple in Kura Solo Vanga, Sapta Kura Da Apeena, Dara La Maga Sapta La, Papaya and Pineapple in Kura Solo Vanga, Sapta Kura Da Apeena, So weekly, twice, and Amari Kura Edith Kula, No Padakuli, Raipanda Arpanu, Kai Vata Edith Sapta Venda Venda. Vegetables and the greens, Patheena, take all type of green leafy vegetables and the vegetables again. இதுலேயுமே பார்த்தீங்கன்னா ஸ்பினாச்சு ட்ராம்ஸ்டிக் லீவ்ஸ் இதெல்லாமே பார்த்தீங்கன்னா கொஞ்சம் அயன் ரிச்சு ஸோ அயன் ரிச்சு போது நம்ம இப்போ உங்களுக்கு தேர்ட் செகண்ட் அண்ட் தேர்ட் ட்ரைமஸ்டரில் டாக்டர்ஸ் வந்து அயன் அண்ட் கேல்சியம் சப்ளிமெண்ட்டு தான் கொடுத்துட்டு வந்திருப்பாங்க ஸோ இது ஃபுட்டு மூலியமாகவும் நம்ம ரைஸ் பண்ணணும்னா கீரை கண்டிப்பாக நம்ம ஆட் பண்ணணுங்க ஸோ ஃபைபர் தாஸ்தி இருக்கு விட்டமின் ஏ அண்ட் பொட்டாசியம் அண்ட் கேல்சியம் அயன் அண்ட் போலிக் ஆசிட் பொட்டாசியம் இந்த ஆன்டி ஆக்சிடன்ஸ் எல்லாம் அதிகம் இருக்கிறதுனால உங்களுக்கு இந்த கோவிட் டைமில் இம்யூனிட்டியை பூஸ்ட் பண்ணுறதுக்கு ரொம்ப ரொம்ப யூஸ்ஃபுல்லாக இருக்கும் ஸோ இது வந்து உங்களுக்கு கான்ஸ்டிபேஷன் அந்த மாதிரி ப்ராப்ளம்லேருந்து ரிலீ
எக்கும் பாத்தீங்கன்னா எக்ல வந்து ப்ரோட்டீன் விட்டமின் டி த்ரீ இருக்கு கோழின்னு இருக்கு இது வந்து உங்களோட ஃபங்க்ஷனிங்க்கும் உங்களோட பேபியோட டெவலப்மெண்ட் ஈஸியா பண்றதுக்கும் ரொம்ப யூஸ்ஃபுல்லா இருக்கும் கோலின் வந்து பாத்தீங்கன்னா உங்களோட மெமரி டெவலப்மெண்ட்னு சொல்லுவாங்க பேபியோட மெமரியோட டெவலப்மெண்ட்டுக்கும் உங்களோட பேக்ரியாட்டிக் டிசார்டர்ஸ் எதுவும் வராம ரெடியூஸ் பண்றதுக்கும் ரிஸ்பெக்டரை ரெடியூஸ் பண்றதுக்கும் ரொம்ப ரொம்ப யூஸ்ஃபுல்லா இருக்கும் ஸோ இவ தரவழி பாயில்டா இருக்கிறதுக்கு பெட்டருங்க உங்களோட பிரேக்ஃபாஸ்ட்ல இல்லைன்னா லன்ச்ல ஆட் பண்ணிக்கோங்க டூ டேக்கிங் இட் அண்ட் நைட் டைம் ஏன்னா சம்டைம்ஸ் வந்து இது கேஸ்டிக் இஷ்யூஸ் அந்த மாதிரி இருந்ததுன்னா நைட்ல உங்களுக்கு தூங்குறது ரொம்ப டிஸ்டபன்ஸ் ஆகிடும் ஸோ மேக்ஸிமம் ஒன் டேக்கு ஒன் டேக் டைம் ஃபிஷ் ஃபிஷ்ஸில் பார்த்தீங்கன்னா குட் சோர்சஸ் ஆஃப் ஒமேகா த்ரீ ஃபேட்டி ஆசிட்ஸ் அண்ட் டிஹெச்சி அண்ட் ப்ரோட்டீன் ஆல்சோ இட் இஸ் இம்பார்ட்டன் யுவர் பீபி பிரெயின் டெவலப்மெண்ட் அண்ட் நர்வஸ் சிஸ்டம் இட் கோ ஃபார் தி ஹோம் மேட் ஃபிஷ் டிசஸ்ஸுங்க டோன்ட் கோ டோ அவுட் சைட் அ ஃபுட்டு அதாவது டீ ஃப்ரை மசாலா ஐட்டம்ஸ் அதிகமாக உள்ளது அதிகமாக எடுக்க வேண்டாம் ப்ளீஸ் ஆடட் டு லோ மெர்க்குரி கண்டென்ட் ஃபிஷஸ் லைக் சால்மன் வஞ்சிரம் கேட்ஃபிஷ் நெய் ஃபிஷ் இது எல்லாமே நீங்கள் எடுத்துக்கலாம் இது எல்லாமே இப்போ வந்து பார்த்தீங்கன்னா ஃபுட் குரூப்ஸ் உங்களுக்கு சொல்லிட்டேன் ஸோ எல்லா ஃபுட் குரூப்ஸ்ல இருந்து ஃபுட் இன்டேக் எடுத்துக்கிட்டீங்கன்னா தான் இஸ் அ கம்ப்ளீட் பேலன்ஸ்ட் நியூட்ரியன்ஸ் வந்து உங்க பேபிக்கு ரீச் ஆகும் தென் தேர்ட் ட்ரைமஸ்டர்ல காமனா என்னென்ன இஷ்யூஸ் எல்லாம் இருக்கும் பார்த்தீங்கன்னா அனிமியா ஹட்பம் டைமோஸ் அண்ட் யூரினேஷன் அதிகமா இருக்கலாம் கான்ஸ்டிபேஷன் இருக்கலாம் கை காலில் முகத்துல அந்த மாதிரி ஏதாவது ஸ்வெல்லிங் அந்த மாதிரி கூட இருக்கலாம் ஸோ இது எப்படி நம்ம வந்து பண்றது பார்த்தீங்கன்னா அனிமிக்கு பார்த்தீங்கன்னா இஸ் ஆயன்ரைஸ் ஃபுட்ஸ் எடுத்துக்கிட்டீங்கனாலே உங்களுக்கு பெட்டர் டூ ரிலீஃப் தென் ஹார்பானை பொறுத்த வரை ரொம்ப லாங் கேப்பை விடக்கூடாது ரொம்ப ஸ்பைசஸ் எதுவும் எடுத்துக்காதீங்க இது மேக்ஸிமம் ஒரு ஒன் ஹவர் ஒன் அண்ட் ஆஃப் ஹவர்ஸில் ஏதாவது ஹெல்த்தி ஃபுட்ஸ் எடுத்துக்கோங்க டைனஸ் அதிகமாகுது அப்படின்னா நீங்கள் நல்ல பேலன்ஸ்டு ஃபுட் எடுக்கும் போது உங்களுக்கு அந்த டைனஸ் வந்து ரெடியூஸ் ஆகும் லிக்விட்ஸ் நிறைய எடுத்துக்கோங்க இந்த லிக்விட்ஸ் அதிகமாக எடுக்கும் போது மேபி யூரினேஷன் அதிகமாகலாம் அது வந்து காமன் சிம்டம்ஸ் தான் ஸோ யூரினேஷன் அதிகமாகுது அது எப்படி கண்ட்ரோல் பண்ணிக்கலாம் அப்படின்னா மார்னிங்ல இருந்து ஸ்டில் நைட் வரைக்கும் தண்ணி நிறைய குடிச்சிட்டு ஆஃப்டர் செவன் ஓ கிளாக்கு மேலே உங்களுக்கு தேவைக்கு மட்டும் டேப்லெட் சாப்பிட்றதுக்கோ இல்லை உங்களுக்கு தோஸ்ட் இருக்கு நான் மட்டுமே தண்ணி குடிக்கலாம் இல்ல நைட் நீங்க டென் ஓ கிளாக் லெவன் ஓ கிளாக் வரைக்கும் தண்ணி நிறைய குடிக்கும் போது என்ன ஆகும் நான் ஸ்லீப்பிங் டிஸ்டபன்ஸ் இருக்கும் அடிக்கடி நீங்க போய் ரெஸ்ட்ரூம் போற மாதிரி இருக்கும் இதை கண்ட்ரோல் பண்றதுக்கு ஒரு மேக்சிமம் நைட் ஒரு எயிட் ஓ கிளாக் மேல அதிகமா எடுத்துக்க வேண்டாம் கான்ஸ்டிபேஷன் கான்ஸ்டிபேஷன்ல வந்து இந்த பைபர் ரிச் ஃபுட்ஸ் எடுத்துக்கிட்டீங்கனாலே போதுங்க டேக் ஆல் டைப் ஆஃப் ஃப்ரூட்ஸ் வெஜிடபிள்ஸ் அண்ட் கீரை வகைகள் இந்த மாதிரி நல்லா எடுக்கும் போது தண்ணி வந்து டே வந்து த்ரீ லிட்டர்ஸ் கவர் பண்ணினாலும் இந்த கான்ஸ்டிபேட்டை நம்ம நல்லா அவாய்ட் பண்ணிக்க முடியும் தென் ஸ்வெல்லிங் ஸ்வெல்லிங் வந்து உங்களோட ப்ரெக்னன்சி டைம்ல ப்ரோட்டீன் கண்டென்ட்டும் குவான்டிட்டியோட வந்து சரியா கிடைக்காத பட்சத்துல இஸ் இம்பேலன்ஸ்டா இருக்கும் போதும் இல்ல ஹைப்பர் டென்ஷன் அந்த மாதிரி ப்ரீ எக்லன்சியான்னு சொல்லுவாங்க அந்த மாதிரி ப்ரெக்னன்சி சிம்டம்ஸ் கிடைக்கும் போதும் உங்களுக்கு ஸ்வெல்லிங் அதிகமா இருக்கும் ஸோ டேக் அ ப்ரோட்டீன் ரிச் ஃபுட்ஸ் எடுத்துக்கிட்டீங்கன்னா இதையும் கூட நம்மளால ரெடியூஸ் பண்ணிக்க முடியும் தென் அயன் இஸ் ஹெல்த் ஃபார்மேஷன் ஃபார் அவர் ரெட் பிளட் செல்ஸ் ஆர்பிசி ஃபார் யூ யூ அண்ட் யுவர் பேபி ஆல்சோ தென் அயன் டெஃபிஷியன்சி கேன் லீட் டு அனிமியா தென் அயன் ரிச் பர்சன் பார்த்தீங்கன்னா மட்டனோட லிவர் அண்ட் கிட்னி போர்ஷன் சேர்த்துக்கலாம் கிரீன் லீஃப் வெஜிடபிள்ஸ் சேர்த்துக்கலாம் தென் பீன்ஸ் டீ பட்டாணி அந்த மாதிரியும் எடுத்துக்கலாம் கீரை வகைகளில் ஸ்பெசிஃபிக்காக பார்த்தீங்கன்னா முருங்கைக்கீரை பாலக்கீரை இது எல்லாத்துலேயுமே உங்களுக்கு ஜாஸ்தி இருக்கு வெஜிடபிள்ஸ்லேயும் பீட்ரூட் எல்லாத்துலேயுமே பீட்ரூட் கேரட் எல்லாத்துலேயுமே அயன் இருக்கு தென் விட்டமின் சி சிட்ரஸ் ஃப்ரூட்ஸ் இருக்கிற மாதிரி பார்த்துக்கோங்க நெல்லிக்காய் லெமன் ஆரஞ்ச் ஆத்துக்குடி மாத இந்த மாதிரி மாதுளம் பழம் இந்த மாதிரி ஃப்ரூட்ஸ் எல்லாமே எடுக்கும்போது உங்களுக்கு அயன் அப்சோர்ச்சு ரொம்பவே யூஸ்ஃபுல்லாக இருக்கும் ஸோ பீஸ் ஆஃப் தி அயன் ரிச் ஃப்ரூட்ஸ் தென் கேல்சியம் இஸ் அனிக்வேட் கேல்சியம் இஸ் நீட்டட் ஃபார் யுவர் பேபியோட போன்ஸ் அண்ட் டீத் டெவலப்மெண்ட்டுக்கும் உங்களோட பேபிஸோட ஹார்ட் நர்வ்ஸ் மசில்ஸ் எல்லாமே டெவலப்மெண்ட் ஆகிறதுக்கும் கேல்சியம் ரொம்ப தேவை என் மதருக்கும் கூட கேல்சியம் அதிகமாக தேவை ஏன்னா யூஸ்வலாக ஒரு லேடிக்கு வந்து நான் ப்ரெக்னன்சி லேடிக்கு அது ஃபோர் ஹண்ட்ரட் மைக்ரோகிராம் பர் டே
டயட்ரி ஃபைபர்ல பாத்தீங்க அப்படின்னா உங்களோட கான்ஸ்டிபேஷன் பிரச்சனையை ரெடியூஸ் பண்ணிக்கிறதுக்கு இந்த ஃபைபர் கண்ணட் உள்ள ஃபுட் ஐட்டம்ஸ் வந்து ரொம்ப ரொம்ப முக்கியம் தென் உங்களோட பிளட் சுகர் லெவலை கண்ட்ரோல் பண்றதுக்கும் ரெகுலேட் பண்ணிக்கிறதுக்கும் ஃபைபர் இஸ் வெரி வெரி இம்பார்ட்டன்ட் தென் உங்களோட வெயிட் கெயின் வந்து ப்ரெக்னன்சி வெயிட் கெயினை கண்ட்ரோல் பண்ணி எடுத்துட்டு போறதுக்கும் இந்த ஃபைபர் எஃபோர்ட்ஸ் ரொம்ப முக்கியம் இந்த தென் இதோட ஹார்ட் ப்ராப்ளம்ஸ் அந்த மாதிரி ஏதாவது வரதுக்கு உண்டான வாய்ப்புகளையும் ரெடியூஸ் பண்றதுக்கு இது அதிக யூஸ்ஃபுல்லா இருக்கு ஸோ என்னென்ன ஃபுட் சோர்சஸ்ன்னு பார்த்தீங்கன்னா ஃபுட் கிரெயின்ஸ் சாரி ஹோல் கிரெயின்ஸ் சீரியல்ஸ் பல்சர்ஸ் அண்ட் நட்ஸ் அண்ட் க்ரீன் லீஃபி வெஜிடபிள்ஸ் அண்ட் ஹோல் ஃப்ரூட்ஸ் அண்ட் வெஜிடபிள்ஸ் ஜூசஸ்ஸாக அந்த மாதிரி எடுத்துட்டீங்க ஃப்ரூட் ஜூசஸ் அந்த மாதிரி எடுத்துக்கிட்டீங்கன்னா ஃபைபர் கண்ணட் அந்த அளவுக்கு இருக்காது ஸோ ஹோல் ஃப்ரூட்டாகவே எடுத்துக்கிறது பெட்டருங்க தீஸ் ஆர் தி ஃபைபர் ரிச் ஃப்ரூட்ஸ் விட்டமின் கே விட்டமின் கே இஸ் எசன்ஸ் ஃபார் பிளட் டு கிளா விச் இஸ் இம்பார்ட்டன்ட் ஃபார் ஆஃப்டர் சைல்டு பர்த் உங்களோட டெலிவரிக்கு அப்புறம் உங்களோட குட்டிகளுக்கு பிளட் கிளாட் அதிகமா இல்லாம பாக்கணும் அப்படின்னா இந்த விட்டமின் கே வந்து ரொம்ப ரொம்ப முக்கியம் ஸோ அதனாலதான் இந்த தேர்ட் ட்ரைமஸ்டர்ல அதுக்கு நம்ம இம்பார்ட்டன்ட் கொடுப்போம் இந்த விட்டமின் கேல பாத்தீங்க அப்படின்னா உங்களோட பிரண்டி ஆஃப் விட்டமின் கே வந்து பாத்தீங்கன்னா உங்களோட பேபியோட வைட்டன் நூட்ரியன்ட்டுக்கு ரொம்ப ரொம்ப முக்கியமானதா இருக்கு இந்த ரிட் ஃபுட்ஸ் சோர்சஸ் ஃபுட் சோர்சஸ் பாத்தீங்கன்னா டேக் ஆல் டைப் ஆஃப் கிரீன் லீஃப் வெஜிடபிள்ஸ் ஸ்பினாச்சு கொரியாண்டர் லீஸ் லெட்டுஸ் தென் வெஜிடபிள்ஸ்ல பாத்தீங்கன்னா ப்ரூசலீஸ் ஸ்ப்ரௌட்ஸ் ப்ரொக்கோலி காலிஃப்ளார் இதெல்லாமே நீங்க எடுத்துக்கலாம் கேபேஜ் ஈவன் தைராய்டு பேஷன்ஸ் கூட நீங்க கேபேஜ் காலிஃப்ளார் இதெல்லாமே நீங்க அவாய்ட் பண்ணணும்னு அவசியம் கிடையாது டேக்க வந்து ஒரு டென் டேஸ் ஒன்ஸ் அந்த மாதிரி கூட நீங்க எடுத்துக்கலாம் ஃப்ரீக்குவன்சி மட்டும் அதிகம் இல்லாம பாத்துக்கலாம் ஸ்பெசிபிக்கா ஃப்ரூட்ஸ் எல்லாம் பாத்தீங்கன்னா கிவி அவகேடா ஃப்ரூட்ஸ் பிக் கிரேப்ஸ் போமா கிரனட் இது எல்லாத்துலயுமே உங்களுக்கு விட்டமின் கே இருக்கு நான்வெஜ்லன்னு பாத்தீங்கன்னா ஃபிஷ் அண்ட் ஃபிவர் மீட் அண்ட் எக் அண்ட் சீரியல்ஸ் இதுல லெஸ் தன் சின்ன ஸ்மாலர் அமௌண்ட் ஆஃப் விட்டமின் கே இருக்கு ஸோ நீங்கள் சொல்கிற இத்தனை ஃபுட் ஐட்டம்ஸும் நான் எடுத்துக்கிறேன் ஸோ சப்ளிமெண்ட்ஸ் எனக்கு வேணுமா அப்படின்னு கேட்டால் கண்டிப்பாங்க டாக்டர் சொல்கிற சப்ளிமெண்ட்ஸ் ஜூரிங் ப்ரெக்னன்சி டைம் அயன் கேல்சியம் போலிக் ஆசிட்ஸ் இதை கண்டிப்பாக நம்ம எடுக்கணும் பிகாஸ் இது என்ன எந்த லெவல் வரைக்கும் நம்ம ரீச் பண்ணுறோன்றது நமக்கு எக்ஸாக்டாக தெரியாது டே டே டெய்லி நம்ம அயன் டெஸ்ட்டோ இல்லை கேல்சியம் டெஸ்ட்டோ பண்ணிட்டு இருக்க முடியாது ஸோ பெட்டர் யூ டேக் சப்ளிமெண்ட்ஸ் ஆல்சோ ப்ளீஸ் டிஸ்கன்யூ பண்ணிடாதீங்க கண்டினியூ இட்ஸ் அ கஃபே ஜூரிங் ப்ரெக்னன்சி டைம் காஃபி வந்து ஜூரிங் ப்ரெக்னன்சி டைம்ல எடுக்கலாமான்னு தாராளமாக எடுத்துக்கலாம் பட் ஒன்ஸ் அதையும் மட்டும் எடுத்துக்கோங்க கஃபே வந்து கேல்சியமோட அப்சார்ஷன் வந்து ரொம்ப கொஞ்சம் மைல்டாக கம்மி பண்ணிவிடும் அதனால ஒரு நாளைக்கு ஒரு கப் அளவுக்கு காஃபி எடுத்துக்கிட்டாலே போதும் வித் ஒயிட் சுகர் போடுறதுக்கு வருவா ப்ரௌன் சுகர்ஸ் போய்க்கோங்க டீ பெஸ்ட்டாக காஃபி பெஸ்ட்டான்னு கேட்டால் இட்ஸ் டீ இஸ் பெஸ்ட் டீல நீங்கள் ஜிஞ்சர் டீல காட்டமேன் டீ அந்த மாதிரி கூட நீங்கள் ஆட் பண்ணி கொடுக்கலாம் காமன் மெத்தன்னு பார்த்தீங்கன்னா ரெண்டு பேருக்கு சாப்பிடு ரெண்டு பேர் ஒரு உயிர் வாழணும்னா நீ நல்லா சாப்பிடு சொல்லிட்டு நிறைய ஃபுட் ஐட்டம்ஸ் கொடுப்பாங்க கரெக்டு தாங்க ரெண்டு பேர் நீங்கள் இருக்கீங்க உங்களுக்கும் உங்கள் குழந்தைங்களுக்கும் சேர்த்தி தான் நியூட்ரியன்ஸை நம்ம ரீச் பண்ணணும் பட் இஸ் நாட் அ குவான்டிட்டி வைஸ் அண்ட் குவாலிட்டி வைஸ் ஸோ நல்ல கம்ப்ளீட் ஒரு பேலன்ஸ்டாக டயட்டாக இருக்கும்போது தேவையான நியூட்ரியன்ஸ் எல்லாமே உங்களுக்கு இன்க்ரீஸ் ஆகி உங்கள் பேபியோட க்ரோத்துக்கு ரொம்ப ரொம்ப யூஸ்ஃபுல்லாக இருக்கும் ஸோ ஓவர் ஈட்டிங் ஆப்பிட்டின்றது இஸ் பேட் ஃபார் போத் யூ அண்ட் யுவர் பேபி ஆல்சோ ஸோ எக்ஸாக்டாக என்னென்ன குவான்டிட்டி எவ்வளோ குவாலிட்டி எவ்வளோ கேலரிஸ் வேணும் அப்படின்றது டிபெண்ட்ஸ் ஆன் உங்களோட ப்ரெசன்ட் வெயிட் இவ்வளோ உங்கள் பிஎம்ஐ இவ்வளோ உங்களோட ஆக்டிவிட்டி எந்த மாதிரி ஆக்டிவிட்டிஸ் லெவலில் இருக்கீங்க ஸோ ஆஸ் வெல் ஆஸ் உங்களோட ட்ரைமஸ்டர் ஆல்சோ இதில் ரொம்ப ரொம்ப இம்பார்ட்டன்ட் எந்த ட்ரைமஸ்டர் எவ்வளோ பேபி வெயிட் இருக்காங்க க்ரோத் எப்படி போயிட்டு இருக்கு இது எல்லாமே டிபெண்ட் பண்ணி தான் நம்ம வந்து டைஜஷன்ஸ் வந்து உங்களோட கேலரிஸ் கேல்குலேட் பண்ணி உங்களுக்கு ஒரு டயட் பிளான் பண்ணி கொடுப்போம் இன் ஆவரேஜ் ஒன் பார்த்தீங்கன்னா டூ கட்சி நம்ம அடிஷ்னலாக த்ரீ ஹண்ட்ரட் அடிஷ்னல் கேலரிஸ் இருந்தாலே போதுங்க ஸோ காமன் வித்து பப்பாயா பைனாப்பிள் முன்னாடியே நான் உங்களுக்கு ஃப்ரூட் செக்ஷனில் சொன்னது தான் தாராளமாக பப்பாயா பைனாப்பிள் எடுக்கலாம் பிகாஸ் இஸ் ரிஜின் விட்டமின் ஏ அண்ட் சி அண்ட் ஃபைபர் அண்ட் ஆயன் பொட்டாசியம் அண்ட் போலிக் 
தென் சாஃப்ரான் பார்த்தீங்க அப்படின்னா ஸோ சாஃப்ரான்ல பார்த்தீங்கன்னா உங்களோட ஸ்ட்ரெஸ் ரிலீஸ் பண்ணி கொடுக்கும் பெயின் ஏதாவது ஆக்ஸ் பெயின்ஸ் அது மாதிரி இருந்தால் ரிலீஸ் பண்ணும் மூட் ஸ்விங்ஸ் எனக்கு ப்ரெக்னன்சி இல்லை டிஸ்கம்ஃபர்ட்ஸ் இது எல்லாத்தையுமே கூட ரெடியூஸ் பண்ணி கொடுக்கறதுக்கு சாஃப்ரான் ரொம்ப ரொம்ப யூஸ்ஃபுல்லாக இருக்கும் சாஃப்ரான்லேயே மல்டி நியூட்ரியன்ஸ் வந்து நிறையா இருக்கு தென் இஸ் மல் மெடிக்கல் ப்ராப்பர்ட்டிஸும் பார்த்தீங்கன்னா அதில் நிறையா இருக்கிறதுனால தாராளமாக ப்ரெக்னன்சி டைம் நீங்கள் சாஃப்ரானும் எடுக்கலாம் பர் டே பார்த்தீங்கன்னா ஒரு ஃபோர் டு ஃபைவ் கட்டல்ஸ் வந்து எடுக்கலாம் தென் பட்டர் அண்ட் கீ பட்டர் நிறையா சாப்பிட்றதுனாலையும் கீ நிறையா சாப்பிட்றதுனாலையும் எனக்கு நார்மல் டெலிவரி ஆகும் அப்படின்னு சொல்லி நிறைய பேர் சொல்லுவாங்க பாட்டி சொன்னாங்க அத்தை சொன்னாங்க பக்கத்து வீட்டில் சொன்னாங்க அப்படின்னு சொல்லுவாங்க இட்ஸ் நாட் அக்கு கரெக்டான ரீசன் கிடையாதுங்க நார்மல் டெலிவரின்றது உங்களோட மன தைரியம் ரெண்டாவது அதையும் தாண்டி சயின்டிஃபிக்காக பார்த்தீங்கன்னா பேபியோட சைஸ் ப்ரெசன்டேஷன் ஆஃப் தி பேபி என்ன கொஷன் இருக்காங்க அவங்க பெரிய சொல்கிறதே எந்த மாதிரி இருக்கு இதெல்லாம் பொறுத்து தான் நார்மல் டெலிவரி ஆகுறதுங்க ஸோ கீயோ பட்டரோ இது வந்து எந்த இடத்துலையுமே அஃபெக்ட் பண்ண போகிறது இல்லை ஸோ நிறைய பேர் வந்து பட்டரை சாப்பிட்டுட்டு வெயிட் கெயின் ஆகிட்டா வரீங்க அதனால பட்டரை வந்து அவாய்ட் பண்ணிக்கோங்க கீ வேணும் ஒரு நாளைக்கு ஒரு டீ ஸ்பூன் அளவுக்கு தாராளமாக சாப்பிட்லாம் ஸோ ஜென்ரல் டிப்ஸ்ன்னு பார்த்தீங்கன்னா எந்த ஒரு மேலையும் ஸ்கிப் பண்ணக்கூடாது அந்த மாதிரி டேக் அ ஸ்மால் மீல்ஸ் எடுத்துக்கோங்க ஃப்ரீக்வெண்ட்டாக இன்டிவீங்களாக லிக்விட்ஸ் எல்லாமே நல்லா எடுத்துக்கோங்க எல்லா ஃபுட் குரூப்ஸில் வந்து ஃபுட் எடுத்துக்கிற மாதிரி பார்த்துக்கோங்க சுகர் கட் அவுட் பண்ணுங்க சுகர் அண்ட் சால்ட் இதெல்லாமே கட் அவுட் பண்ணுங்க ஸ்நாக்ஸ் வந்து உங்களோட ஹெல்த்தி ஃப்ரூட்ஸ் அண்ட் வெஜிடபிள்ஸாக இருக்கிறது ரொம்ப ரொம்ப ஹெல்ப்ஃபுல்லாக இருக்கும் ஸோ கப்பேனேட்டட் பெவரேஜஸ் அந்த மாதிரி பார்த்தீங்கன்னா அதை கொஞ்சம் ரெடியூஸ் பண்ணிக்கோங்க ஃப்ரை ஐட்டம்ஸ் ஸ்பைசி ஐட்டம்ஸ் ரெடிமேட் ஃபுட்ஸ் அவுட் சைட் ஃபுட்டு இது எல்லாமே கொஞ்சம் அவாய்ட் பண்ணிக்கோங்க இட்ஸ் ஆல்சோ ரெடியூஸ் டு யுவர் ஹார்ட் பண் அண்ட் இன்டைஜன் சிம்டம்ஸ் ஆல்சோ again congratulations i wish you a happy and healthy pregnancy okay irk individually ungalku personal la ungalku diet consultation venumna ne hospital ku visit varumbodhu ninga ne paakalam illa google la poninga na women center by mother or point of branch panninga na adha video consultation ku available la irpa so ungaloda particular ah ungaloda baby weight la irukanga doctors enna solla irukanga என்ன மெடிசன்ஸ் எடுத்துட்டு இருக்கீங்க இதுக்கு எல்லாமே ஏற்ற மாதிரியும் உங்களுக்கு டயட் பிளானை நாங்கள் தனியாக இண்டிவிஜுவலாகவும் பண்ணி கொடுப்போம் இப்போ உங்களுக்கு ஏதாவது டவுட்ஸ் இருந்தால் ப்ளீஸ் மெசேஜ் பண்ணுங்கள் நான் ஆன்சர் பண்ணுறேன் Okay. Thank you to all.
ஹாய் அருணா எனி ஸ்பெசிஃபிக் ஃபுட்டு அவாய்ட் வாமிட்டிங் போட்டிருக்கீங்க ஸோ எந்த ஒரு ஸ்பெசிஃபிக் ஃபுட்டும் அவாய்டிங்கன்றத விட வாமிட்டிங்கிறது இஸ் அ காமன் சிம்டம்ஸ் இன் ஜூரிங் ப்ரெக்னன்சி டைம் இல்லைங்களா ஸோ இந்த டைமில் நீங்கள் அப்படி வாமிட் எழுந்துச்சுன்னா போய் வாமிட் பண்ணிட்டு ஒரு டம்ளர் வாம் வாட்டர் எடுத்து கொஞ்சம் வாய் நல்லா பொப்பிச்சுட்டு அதுக்கப்புறம் போய் உடனே படுத்துக்காம ஒரு டென் மினிட்ஸ் கழிச்சு ஏதாவது ஃப்ரூட்ஸோ இல்லை ஃப்ரூட் ஜூஸஸோ அந்த மாதிரி ஏதாவது ஒன்று எடுத்துக்கோங்க பிகாஸ் என்னன்னா நீங்க போய் உடனே நான் வாமிட் பண்ணிட்டேன்னு சொல்லி போய் கொஞ்ச நேரம் போய் படுத்து அப்படியே தூங்கிட்டீங்கன்னா அந்த பக்கம் ஒரு ஒன் ஆர் டூ ஹவர்ஸ் வந்து குட்டிக்கு எதுவும் இல்லாம இருக்கும் ஸோ அதனால பெட்டர் ரூட்டே லிக்விட்ஸ் ஏதாவது நல்லா எடுத்துக்கோங்க வாமிட் பண்ணும் போது டீஹைட்ரேட் ஆகாம பாத்துக்கணும் இந்த ஸ்பெசிஃபிக் ஃபுட்டும் பாத்தீங்கன்னா ரொம்ப ஜங்க் ஃபுட்ஸோ ஸ்பைசிஸோ ஆயில் ஸ்நாக்ஸ் எல்லாம் கொஞ்சம் அவாய்ட் பண்ணீங்கனாலே உங்களுக்கு வாமிட்டிங் கண்ட்ரோல் ஓரளவுக்கு செட்டில் ஆகும் Any questions, please? Welcome, Aruna. Thank you to all. சரிடா <laughs> So, Lalita's question is this. Overnight soaked rice water can increase water level. Is it safe to have since it's been fermented overnight? Dharalama uh, edit it. Soaked rice water edit it. It is increased to weight also. Rice water you can edit it. 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 But if you want to edit it, you can edit it. It's not a compulsory. யா வாட்டர் லெவலை இன்க்ரீஸ் பண்ணுமான்னு கேட்டிருக்கீங்க உங்களோட ஃப்ளூயிட் லெவல் லிக்விட் லெவல் வந்து இன் அடிக்வேட்டாக இருக்குது ஸ்கேனில் சொல்லியிருந்தாங்க அப்படின்னா யூ டேக் அட் மோர் ஆஃப் ஃப்ளூயிட்ஸ் லைக் ரெண்டு கோக்கனட் சூப்பர் பட்டர் மில்க்கு லெமன் ஜூஸ் ரைஸ் வாட்டர் கஞ்சி அந்த மாதிரி நிறைய லிக்விட்ஸ் எடுத்துக்கிட்டீங்கன்னாவே போதுமானது இன்னொன்று லிக்விட் வந்து கம்மி ஆகுறதுன்றது உள்ள இன்டர்னல் ஆர்கன்ஸோட விஷயம் 
ஸோ நம்ம எக்ஸ்டர்னல்லாம் நம்ம ஒரு லெவல் வரைக்கும் சப்போர்ட் பண்ணணும் வெல்கம் நடித்தா எனி கொஸ்டின்ஸ் Okay, no doubts. <laughs> okay, this session will be time be closed. Take care and again congratulations. Take care of the pregnancy. Bye. You know, one more question. Any foods that can induce a labor? So already I will told no. இந்த பட்டர் அண்ட் கீ ஆல்சோ வந்து லேபரை வந்து இன்ட்யூஸ் பண்ணுமா அப்படின்ற ஒரு மித்து இருக்கு அப்படி எதுவும் கிடையாது லேபரை வந்து இன்ட்யூஸ் பண்றதுக்கு ப்ராப்பரான நீங்க வைக்கேன் இருக்கணும் உங்க மைண்ட் செட் தென் கொஸ்டின் ஆஃப் பேபி தென் பிசிக்கல் ஆக்டிவிட்டிஸ் வாக்கிங் அண்ட் எக்ஸசைஸ் அண்ட் போல் எக்ஸசைஸ் எவ்ரி திங் இஸ் இன்ட்யூஸ் லேபர் நோ ஸ்பெசிபிக் ஃபுட்ஸ் த கேன் இன்ட்யூஸ் அவர் லேபர் Anything else? Okay, Laita. We will meet in directly. Okay, take care. Bye.